All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is your lecture number six. Uh, we're going to start with dynamic programming. So it is like an extension of your divide and conquer, but it is not exactly divide and conquer. So uh, we'll go over what dynamic programming is and <clears throat> we'll see the steps. <coughs> I'm sorry. And then uh, we'll uh, do one example. We have to do a couple of examples. So we'll start with the example of matrix multiplication. So if you uh, go back to the previous lecture, any divide and conquer problem, you divide the problem into sub problems and the sub problems are independent of each other. But in some cases like your Fibonacci series, the sub problems, they're not exactly dependent on each other. In that case, you have similar sub problems in different branches of the divide and conquer. So you are recalculating those values every time you make a recursive call. So uh, there is no dependency as such in the sub problems, but then there are repetitive sub problems and you are spending extra time in calculating what has already been maybe calculated in another branch of your recursion tree, okay? So this technique, it works on problems where you have to find some kind of a optimal solution and where your problems are not independent, okay? There'll be some dependency we'll see in a while. So it is like divide and conquer. In divide and conquer, we divide the problem into sub problems so that we solve individual sub problems and we combine the result of the individual subproblems or the division itself solves the problem for us. We solve the problem recursively. We'll do that here in dynamic programming as well. And we combine, like I said, we combine the solution into the original problem, all the subproblems into the original problem. So on the other hand, dynamic programming is used for optimization problem. Optimization problem is a problem where you have to, uh, you, you can have multiple answers for the problem, but then you want to find 
the optimal answer which can be uh, let's say we uh, you have many solutions available i want you to give me the maximum possible of all of those you have many solutions available i want you to give me the minimum okay so there are many possible solutions and we want to select the optimal solution a set of, so a set of choices must be made to get an optimal solution so we have to uh, maximize or minimize something normally that is the case so the goal in dynamic programming is solve a problem to get an optimal solution okay so there are these are the four steps of dynamic programming algorithm you'll usually uh, th this is the standard you usually see it everywhere so first of all when you are given a problem you have to understand the problem and you have to create a basically you have to create a solution or a structure of the problem and that solution let's say it, it's like a mathematical formula you create which you have to maximize or minimize so that is your first step then since we are talking of problems and their sub problems we have to define a recursive solution for that optimal solution structure that we just <clears throat> did in step 1 okay so what what will be the structure of the optimal solution in step 1 how will you recursively define that solution and then once you get recursively define you have to compute the value of the optimal solution in bottom up fashion so that's important we'll see what this bottom up fashion is construct an optimal solution from the computer information so you might need for step 4 or you might not need step 4 so bottom up fashion i can explain to you like this so if you to calculate fibonacci numbers we have to calculate f fibonacci n minus 1 and n minus 2 and then you have to uh, add the two so let's say if n is 8 just write the numbers this is 7 and 6 this is 6 and 5 this is 5 and 4 this is fibonacci this is fibonacci of 5 and 4 4 and 3 4 and 3 if you see you're seeing repetitions so lot of repetitions happening to 1 2 one so fib 1 and 2 or 0 and 1 is defined so 1 and 0 so this is your entire rec recursion tree for fib for finding fibonacci of 8 so when you will call then you will you obviously going to add fibonacci n minus 1 plus fibonacci n minus 2 so if you see <clears throat> i can point out many uh many places where you are so let's say i i had calculated this first okay uh, or let's say i calculated this first let's say this is my step 1 and if i calculated this and i stored it somewhere so when i reached here in this the right subtree i could go back and fetch the stored value and replace that here so that way i would save myself from this entire right hand side okay so for for if you see now we change the color if you see this 5 4 here okay this 5 4 depends on 4 3 so 4 3 you, you find it many places what does 4 3 depend on it depends on 3 2 and 3 2 depends on 1 0 so if i make a table where i store fibonacci 1 fibonacci 2 so whenever i i calculate fibonacci of 3 i store the value here then 4 i will store the value here so after 5 i'll store the value here 
So I'll, I'll do the calculations in a bottom-up fashion. So I won't start with Fib 8. I will start with, I know fib, uh, Fibonacci of 1 is 1, Fibonacci of even, in fact, 0 is 0. So when I add the 2, Fibonacci of 2 is 1, right? So I will do the calculations bottom-up. And when I have to find Fibonacci of a big number, I'll go and refer to this table. So I am not calculating from Fib 8. I am calculating from Fib 0. So I'm doing my work in a bottom-up fashion and storing my work. And when I store my work, I can go and access it. So I have to, the only difference between the regular, regular algorithm and this is, first of all, the order changes. I don't do a top to bottom calculation. I do a bottom top calculation. Secondly, I need additional space to store these bottom up values so that I can reference to them later. So space is not an issue normally. So uh, in, in such algorithms, you can say there is an additional space complexity. So you need additional space to store these earlier or small values and you build your bigger values by uh, fetching these smaller values and also storing them so that they can be used further. So coming back here. So we have to do the calculation in a bottom up fashion, right? Now, to understand this dynamic programming, we will first, we have to take up a practical example. So the first practical example we will take and while doing this example, you'll understand what we're talking about. The first problem that we are taking is matrix multiplication. So so we are not actually talking about a simple A into B matrix multiplication. We are talking about the scenario where you have a chain of, chain of matrices that you have to multiply. Okay. So in this chain, I have four matrices that I can multiply, that I have to multiply with each other. Sorry, not four, it's three. I just, okay, there are three matrices that you have to multiply. So what are, what are, what are the different ways you can multiply? Okay, associativity of uh, multiplication of matrices. You have three matrices that you have to multiply with each other. You can multiply a matrix only when the column of the first matrix is, the size of the column is same as the size of the rows of the second one. And here, this and this should match. So once you have a sequence of matrices, which are, they are placed in order. So once they are placed in order, the assumption is all the, the chain of matrices will be compatible in terms of multiplication, having this criteria fulfilled. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, so when you multiply a matrix, let's say, I just, I just draw, this is a three cross three and three cross two. So when you have to multiply, you multiply this with this, plus this multiplication and this multiplication. So all of these three will be added and this will become the first term of the resultant matrix. This is three into three, this is three into two. So the resultant matrix will be three into two, right? So for, for the second, entry here, you will do the same thing 
of first row with second column. Similarly, you will fill in these entries. So how many multiplications do you need in this case? So you'll have three multiplication to calculate this. Again, three multiplications to calculate this. Then again, there are three multiplications here. Okay, and then additions. So overall, overall 18. So if you see there are six terms, every term needs three multiplications. So the number of multiplication needed is 18. Okay. So what is the number of multiplication? If you look at this, the number of multiplications is three into three. And this common three is removed into two, three into three into two. So if a matrix has, so if a matrix has, uh, what first matrix is of order M into N, and the second one is N into Q. This N is common, so the number of multiplications required is M into N into Q. Okay, <clears throat> so keeping this in mind, we will go about our matrix multiplication example. Now, what is the point of, what is the matrix multiplication problem? If you're given a sequence of matrices that are compatible in terms of they can be multiplied with each other, the orders are in proper sequence. What we want to do is we want to see which, which way of multiplying or which order of multiplication will give us the minimum number of multiplications. Because like I told you last time, multiplication is an expensive operation. It is rep repeated addition. So it's a heavy operation in terms of time. So we want to minimize it. If you have a longer, in this chain, there are only two options, two uh, ways you can associate the matrices. The longer the chain, the more options you have. So it's not as simple as this problem here, but let's just see. If I multiply A and B first, I need, these many multiplications, okay? And the order of, after you multiply A and B, the order of the final matrix is this. Then you have to multiply it with C, whose order is this. So this is uh, 400 plus when you multiply these two, it is two into 20 into 10. Okay, on the other side here, uh, when you multiply A, sorry, B and C, order of A is 2 into 10. When you multiply B and C, the number of multiplications is this much, and the final order of the matrix is 10 cross 10. So when you multiply A with this one, then you have 2 into 10 into 10, plus this is 2000. So if you see on the left hand side, you get uh, 400 plus 400, you get 800. And here you get uh, 2000 plus 200 is 2200. So this order, this, uh, if you multiply A with B first, you reduce the number of multiplications by 1400. So this is just for uh, a three sequence matrix. If the matrix sequence is long, you can reduce the number of multiplication drastically. So here you just have two options. So you have to, we have to, once you get the answers, you have to see which one is the minimum of the two. So this is a minimization problem. What we are trying to do is we have a sequence of matri uh, matrices that we have to multiply and we have to minimize the number of multiplications required to do the same. So our problem is a it's an optimization problem where you have to minimize. Now, uh, let's see if you have a longer chain, okay? 
I just write the chain of matrices. If I have six matrices, and now I have to multiply. So these are the points where you can put the parentheses. So you can have, let's say, let's say, uh, A1, A2, A3, A4. Let's say this is the first step we do. You could do it in any other way. I'm just, uh, this is just like one of the combinations that are, that is possible. So all these five points here, these are the possible points where you can put brackets. So you can do A1, 2, 3, and you can do A3 to 6. This can be one combination. Then A to 3, you have to decide whether you'll do A1, A2, A3, or you will do A1, A2, A3, right? Another combination. So these five points, which you see underlined by yellow, these are the points where we can possibly put, possibly put the uh, brackets. The location. Let's name them K. So if K is one, that means you are, this is the first location where you, so this is when K is one. So K can be two, three, four, and five. So K can take values one, two, three, four, five. So this chain of matrix, this A1 to A6, we can write it like A1 dot 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 six dot 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 six so this okay let me write it again this is the chain of matrix if it is written like this it means there are there are six matrices to be multiplied with each other what are the values that k can take so if this one is i and this six is j k can take the values from uh, So uh, we have to do a bit of mathematics and construct a mathematical model for this problem. And then you will write a program using that mathematical equation. That's what I'm trying to do. So you have a chain of matrices. The chain of matrices is I dot 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 J. I and J can be anything. Obviously in order, because we'll name the matrices 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Or it can be, when you divide, it can be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but in sequence. The K value, or these are the, the points where you can put the brackets or where you can divide the chain into two halves or uh, whichever way, which we have to minimize. That is determined by uh, K. K determines the position where you're, where you're dividing the chain and you're deciding how you are going to multiply. This K is what determines that. So K can take values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So essentially, K can be equal to I, but less, it will be less than J. Means you cannot have a six location here. There's nothing after this. So K here makes no sense. Okay, so K can be one, two, three, four, five. If the chain is length six, K can take only five values. If the chain of is of length N, K can take only N minus one, from one to N minus one values. Okay. Now we have to find the appropriate value of K. Okay, uh, so for example. This is, I say, okay, I will parenthesize here. Okay. Why, why did I choose K equal to two? Uh, wasn't K equal to one better to compare the partition of K equal to one and K equal to two? You should know 
what is the minimum number of multiplications for this sub sub chain and what is the minimum number of multiplication for this sub chain okay so you cannot you cannot split the chain at location 1 2 3 4 5 unless you know what is the minimum number of multiplications required for the sub chains this particular division forms so unless you know the num minimum number of multiplications for these two chains you will not be able to tell for sure whether k equal to 1 is better let's say for k equal to 1 this would be the division so now if i ask you whether is this one better 1 or 2 better you'll say i i first find out what is the minimum number required for this let's say it is m1 what is the minimum required for this this is m2 then so total number of multiplications for this chain is m1 plus m2 plus you are actually partitioning it here you have to then multiply these two that uh, let's say put a capital x for that the number of multiplications required to multiply these two sub chains for example this is uh, y1 and this is y2 so total num number of multiplication is minimum number of multiplications for this sub chain and this sub chain and the number of multiplications to multiply this matrix on the left and whatever the resultant matrix on the right okay so how will you know y1 or y2 or m1 or m2 you will know them only when you know the min minimum number of multiplication for this chain and now this is again a long chain this one is small a1 a1 is just a single matrix so number of multiplications uh, or you can say y1 is zero because you're not multiplying anything but y2 is a long chain a2 to 6 can be split in many ways so how do you know so again you have between 2 to 6 you you can have four ways you can multiply so you know, need to know which of the four ways uh, gives you the minimum number of multiplications. So you cannot start processing this problem from the top. You cannot use a top to bottom approach. You need to know the minimum to multiply the chains. And then you should know all the multiplications uh, for every pair first. Once you know the multiplication for every pair first, then you can decide how three can be multiplied. So uh, let me just show it to you here. Let's say I just put A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, if I know the number of multiplications of these pairs. Okay. If I know the multiplications for these pairs, I can decide whether for A, B, C, I should do this or this. Similarly, for B, C, D, I should do this or this. Similarly, for C, D, E. So these are basically, sorry, no D here. So these are basically all the sub problem solutions you should have with you before you can go. Uh, Okay, uh, so once you know the minimum of these two, then you can decide which one of the two, let's say this is uh, first and second, whether you should go first with uh, D or second with D. Okay, and it's not D here, there is like a lot more complication on this side also. So, what is the uh, length of this chain of matrices? It is 6. Okay. So, we need to find the minimum number of multiplications for the chain of length 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 before we can decide what is the minimum number of multiplication for the chain of length 6. 
this uh, chain of length one is the individual matrix the number of multiplications for that is zero chain of two is all these pairs you need to know the number of multiplications for all the pairs once you have those values and you have to when you calculate you have to store them because you need to reference them later then you have to see chain of three chain of three is this one your next level for chain of three you need to know all the possible ways of multiplying once you have that then you have to go for chain of four chain of four for example what are the possible four chains a b c d b c d e then c d e f so there are only three chains of length four so a b c d whether you will do a b c d or a b c d or a b c d so there are three possible ways for this which one of the two will give you minimum this one you can calculate you because you have this and this here right a b c d you can calculate when you have uh, i didn't write all the chains b c d okay for a b c you know one or two is minimum so whether this is minimum or this is minimum and that you will replace here for a b c d you will know which one of the two is minimum and you so once you know this length of 4 then you will go for length of 5 this or this then you have again two options and then from having after having 4 you will have the minimum number of multiplications for length of 5 this seems like a very long process but it is simple math mathematics we'll get to that then you can have length of 6 <clears throat> so again with respect to the length of the matrices your k is where k is the point where you are actually multiplying that will range from 1 to 5 only <clears throat> is this clear you can raise your hands if it is clear because what follows this depends on it okay if you have any questions you can just type in the chat box we have to do, still do the problem but this is <clears throat> the basic so uh, okay coming back to your so to do a to do matrix uh -huh. okay so this is the matrix chain multiplication problem put mathematically you are given a sequence of matrices it is a chain of matrices numbered a1 a2 a3 up to n the matrices uh, should be compatible with respect to multiplication when um, which i told you m into n and n into q <clears throat> so this is how you would do basic uh, multiplication i not go through this so the problem here is what order should we multiply the matrices so that we get the minimum number so like i we just saw in the example it's another example here if you have a1 a2 a3 these are the <clears throat> these are the orders of this these matrices if you do a1 into a2 first you get A one into A two and then A three, you get two thousand five hundred multiplications. And if you do A one separate and A two A three combined, you get fifty thousand fifty thousand. Yeah. Now this is fifty thousand for this. Yes. So total seventy five thousand multiplications. This is fifty thousand for this one plus. This twenty-five, that's seventy thousand. So in this case, you have seven thousand five hundred, and you have seventy-five thousand. So you can see the magnitude of difference it can make to select the best way of parent sizing. Okay. Now, uh, okay. 
since it's a mathematical problem, you have to write, let's say you have to write a code for this. So if you are given a chain of matrices, you first need to know the length of the chain. So your N gives you the length of the chain. Okay. Then for each matrix, you have to store the order of the matrix. So for if for A1, the order is P0, P1, then definitely for A2, the order will be P1, P2 because this has this part has to be common okay so this will go on till you reach <clears throat> the nth matrix so what we do is to store the order of the matrix we declare an array this is 0 1 2 3 so on n so, okay, don't let me write here. So let me show it to you on the whiteboard. So, A is P0 into P1, A1, A2 is P1, P1 into P2, A3 is P2 into P3. So I'll store P0 here, P1, P2, P3, so on. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I tell you that uh, This is A of I minus I cross J. And uh, if you have to multiply, suppose, okay, let's not do it this way. If you have, uh, okay, this, if you have to multiply the A, this is A1 and this is A2. If you have to multiply A1 and A2, what is the total number of multiplications? P0 into P1 into P2. Right? So P0 into P1 into P2. P0 and P1 is from this first matrix and P2 is the... So where is P0 stored? It is stored in 0. P1 is stored in 1. So what I want to tell you here is if I'm talking about A1 into A2 in the chain of matrices, if A1 is I, this one is I and this is J. If you have to write a generalized equation of this, you will write it like this. Uh, here. You will write it like this. What is P0? P0 is P of I minus one into P1 is P of I and P2 is P of J. So when you multiply two matrices, If you multiply AI into AJ, the number of multiplications to multiply these two is P of I minus 1 into P of I into P of J. Based on how we have stored it here in the array. Okay. So... Uh, So if you do, uh, before we go into the solution using dynamic programming, if you do uh, using like in a way brute force and check all the possible parentheses, uh, then all the possible combinations, it will take you omega of 4 to the power n. Omega means it will take greater than 4 to the power n divided by so on, which is exponential value. Okay. So the first step of dynamic programming, we have to find the structure of an optimal, of the optimal problem, or in, in this case, optimal parenthesis, okay? So these are the notations we are using. You have a chain of matrices, I to J, I is less than J, okay? 
for optimal parenthesization we have to split at a point k and k will range from i to j it can be equal to i it cannot be equal to j which i explained earlier so once you split something at k this k is unknown so we have to find the optimal k value which will give us the least number of mul uh, multiplications then you get two sub problems a i to k and a k plus 1 to j so if you're splitting at uh, a 3 then your next chain will start from 4 onwards okay so that's why k plus 1 j so again these two sub problems are the similar problems that you are solved you went you started solving these are also chain of matrices which need to be minimized okay so again that means you have given a recursive structure to your problem your original problem of length i j minus one j minus i plus one is now divided into two sub problems of similar type with uh, size k minus i plus one and j minus k minus one plus one okay so we have to find the minimum of the two only then we can say okay now multiply these at with this parenthesization okay now if this is again your sub problem now how do we define the recursive solution first of all if the chain of length is one recursion needs base case our base case is if chain of length is one the number of multiplications required is zero so what we do is we define a 2d array called m and m i j is defined as the minimum number of multiplications needed to compute the chain of matrices from a i to a j okay so our full problem is a 1 to n so let's say m 1 n stores the minimum number of multiplications required to this is basically our solution that we are looking for so we, this is just a nomenclature we given giving so m1 n will store the minimum number of multiplications required to uh, multiply these uh, chain of matrices okay so what is our smallest problem a smallest problem or our base case in this case is one matrix if the chain is of length one then for any this one means a1 a2 individually everything is the number of multiplications required to uh, multiply a matrix of a chain of length one is zero okay so when we write our problem like this we are actually dividing it to two problems finding the num minimum number of multiplications for the chain i to k finding the minimum number of multiplications for the chain k plus 1j and you will also need this this is what i just now told you when you are multiplying two matrices whose order what will be the final order of the left side it will be i into the order of the matrix i and k in the sense uh, uh, there are two numbers so it will i can just write it like this then the right side will be this okay when you have to multiply these two this is not actually k plus one so let's not do it this way it will be confusing so if you just go back to the whiteboard i told you the just let me go back to the whiteboard so it is for two matrices i and j it is i minus one i and uh, j okay so if you see here it is p i minus one 
into P K. Okay, and P J. We'll see in an example how it is. You have to take the order of the left hand side. This one. Uh, its order will be stored in I minus one and P K, and its it is actually stored in P K and P J. So P K is common. You just have P J here. Okay. So we can write our recursive solution as M I J. If you are given a chain of length. A I to A J. It is equal to let's say let's say we divide at K. We don't know what this K is. We'll just uh, we said K is between I and J. This is what we said, and K can be equal to I. K cannot be equal to J. So we will find the num minimum number of multiplications for I to K, and then K plus one to J. And the num minimum number of multiplications to multiply these two chains, i to k and k to j. Okay, but what is this k? We know that this k can take these values, but which of the values should we take as our solution? So that we do by we have to find. If you look at uh, here. Look here. This one, this part here. The number of multiplications to multiply i the chain from i to j is zero if i is equal to j. This is the case of one matrix. For all the other lengths of the matrix chain, we don't know what k we should use, so we will do this calculation. For all the k values that can fall in the range, i is less than j. So in that range, whatever values k takes, we will calculate this formula for all of them. It's simple mathematical formula. It won't take. You have to fetch these two values, and you have to calculate this and add all of them. So we'll calculate all the k values. You won't. You'll see they are not much based on the. Uh, Structure that we have defined, and we will choose the minimum of those. Okay. So, if we if we do it by recursion from top to bottom, it will take a lot of time because uh, top to bottom you you don't have the values for the smaller chains. So what we and you will recalculate the smaller chains again and again, again and again. So what we'll do, we'll calculate bottom to up. We'll calculate like I uh, showed you in, on the whiteboard. We'll calculate for chain of length zero, uh, sorry, length one, length two, length three, length four, length five, till we reach the chain. Because if the length is six, the final chain is of length six. There's only one chain. Okay. Now. Another important thing: How do we fill these tables? Like I told you, we did clear. So if I have the chain, uh, let's do a smaller chain: A three, A four. Okay, you can have. This is zero, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, zero, 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 one, and one, zero. These entries do not make any sense for our problem. So you could possibly just write uh, just put a cross or a zero there. So uh, chain of length one. Is sorry. M one one. This is your M. M one one means just A one multiplying that is zero. Similarly, M two two will be zero. M three three will be zero. M four four will be zero. Right. So 
for chain of length one, we have done the calculations and we have put them there. Now, if we have to multiply A1 to chain of length two, how many chains of length two are there? There are only three chains of length two. Okay, A1, two, two, three, three, four. What is the number of multiplications for A1, two? It is P0 into P1 into P2. Here it is P1 into P2 into P3. Here it is P2 into P3 into P4. So we can get these. Okay. We can put those values here. Okay. So see the order in which we are filling the table. We are filling the table first A11, A12, A13, A14. So this is the order we are filling the table. Now, if you calculate A12, A23 and A34, again, you're filling the table in this order. What will be the chain of length three? A1, two, three. And the second chain will be A234. So if you see one, three, this is M13. And this is M24, okay? One three is here, two four is here. Again, we are calculating in this direction. Okay, and then what is the chain of length four? It is straight away A one two four, which is M of one four. So then after, when we have all these values, we can get this value and this value will be our solution. So we have to see, this is a 2D matrix. You are just going to fill the 2D matrix and notice you are just going to fill, we call it the upper triangular matrix. This is kind of totally not used to it because this doesn't make any sense. Three, two, you cannot multiply the chain in reverse order. So we are just worried about the upper triangular matrix. Okay. So this is what you have to calculate. And now you saw what is the order of your calculations. So your, uh, when you are running a loop to fill this 2D array with the formula that we just devised, you have to see how you will have your i and j values so that you traverse this 2D array diagonally from in the upper to lower um, direction so that the, the, because this is the order in which we need to calculate. Because if we have this, we will be able to calculate this one. If we have this one, we will be able to calculate the final chain. So these values are needed in this order so that you can move ahead and find the length of the chain uh, of higher uh, dimension okay so this i and j what is if you see what is the relation between i and j i is one uh, j is two i is two j is three in the first loop i is three j is four okay uh, what in the second loop in the second loop uh, i and j is 1 and 3 and 2 and 4. Okay, then in the third loop, i and j is 1 and 4. If you see, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 3 is 1. Here it is 2, 2. Here it is 3. So in every loop, the difference between j, j minus i is 1 in the first loop two in the second loop and three in the third loop. So using this, we will, we can devise our, we can write our loop to do this. Uh, just give me a second. I have to take this call. Hello? G other this. G take. जी 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 हाँ मैं अभी आऊँगी मेरी क्लास है तो मैं खत्म करके आती हूँ ओके ओके सो नाउ वी नो हाउ आई एंड जे आर रिलेटेड वी कैन जस्ट 
for length one, i and j are equal. For length two, j is equal to i plus one, or j minus i is one. For length three, j is equal to i plus two. Okay, so you using that we'll be able to calculate. So this is just an example when you are finding the number of min minimum number of multiplications for a chain from two to five. So that means four matrices. Okay, what are the possible combinations from for two to five? You can have uh, two, three, four, five. There are four matrices. So three, four, five can be in one side or only four, five. Or five, five, and two, three, four is on this side, and then accordingly, your P one, P two will be there. The length of the chain is two, three, and four. Oh, sorry, the k value is two, three, and four. Whether when you have uh, two, these are the four matrices. K can be two, k can be three, k can be four. So based on this, you will calculate these three here, and you will find the minimum. And then that will, this two five can be used for one, one six later on, okay. So uh, I'll just go over this uh, one problem quickly, and then next class we'll do another problem in detail. We'll use the whiteboard also, so that's easier. So if you have these three matrices and you have to order, this is a short, short uh, chain. You have one, two, and three. So you, and the, oh, the, and sorry, you have to calculate a one, a two, a three, right? <clears throat> chain of length one is a one, a two, a three separately. Chain of length two is a one, a two, and a two, a three. So a one, two. They're just this is this. A two, three is this. Okay. Once you get these two, you can decide what goes here. So if you see in the next slide, a one two, like I said, we have to calculate a one two and a two three. So a one two, we get five thousand using the formula. A two three, you get twenty five thousand. A one three will means if you see here where you're going to put the k value. K can be one and k can be two. So if k is one, you get m one one and m two three. If k is two, you get m one two and m two three. That is this parenthesization, and you get the two values. And seven thousand five hundred is smaller. So this is what will be put in the final answer here. In this one, okay. Okay, just this last slide, and we'll do the. Next example in the next class. So, <clears throat> to calculate, to, to find the minimum number of multiplications for a chain of length, uh, whatever L, you need to use this formula and calculate the values for uh, filling a two D array, only the upper triangular matrix in the order I just told you. From the order of calculation for us is bottom up, chain of length one, length two, length three, and the order of calculation of the matrix is diagonal from top to bottom, and in the upper triangular matrix. So if you see here, this is the algo. Okay, to fill a two D matrix, you have you go from two to n, and a uh, if you see this here, sorry, this i and j, based on the length, it is the same. j is equal to i plus one. If you see, uh, i is one, one to j. j is n minus uh, l is the chain length plus one. Okay, n is the current value of uh, length because we are taking lengths, chains of different lengths. So. When we are taking chain, uh, taking the chain of length two, so uh, your i and j values will change accordingly. You can just put some basic values, and you'll see you'll get the same pairs in the same order. So this part takes care of the that diagonal uh, matrix calculation in this direction. And initially, all the values are initialized to infinity. Why? Because we want to uh, we'll calculate and we'll minimize. 
then your third loop starts for the k value because you have to for the chain whatever k values are possible you will calculate this formula you will calculate this formula here for all the k values and whatever is existing there we have initialized everything to infinity so q whatever is calculated would obviously be less than that at the in in the first case so you will put that here so you you will put that q value in mij and if you notice there is something else called sij which i will tell you in the next class with the example so for now ignore the circle part you are putting q in that if if in the next k value the value you calculate in this formula is less than the existing q value in mij you will replace that here okay so this is a small program for doing what for calculating the formula in the order that we just defined okay just a second okay re explain uh, you want to re explain the uh, recursive solution or uh, um, i mean the formula or this uh, program okay fine okay so we'll go over this uh, program again for this sij in the next class so basically what sij will do for you i'll tell you briefly you are calculating just just remember you are doing pictorially what i showed you on the 2d matrix you are doing the calculations in a diagonal manner in the upper triangular matrix only in the upper part and your i and j is taken care of here uh, the k minimization part is taken care of in this for loop and then this sij basically the k which gives you the minimum value that you store here in mij needs to be stored because you need to know where you have split the matrix where which one of the k gave you the minimum value so you have to store it for that we create another 2d matrix called sij where we store the k value you'll see that we'll do an example and then i'll explain to you now simple a uh, way of calculating the runtime of this uh, algorithm is look at the code you see three for loops at least and the maximum length of these for loops is going to be n which is the uh, uh, total size of your chain okay so three for loops maximum size can be n or let's say n minus 1 we'll take the upper bound we'll say n all the for loops will run for a maximum of n so straight away your run time comes o of n q okay so this is your matrix chain multiplication we will do another example uh, and we'll go over this code and another example in the next class uh, i would have continued but my laptop battery is dying and i my charger i don't know where it is masters theorem i think i have divide and conquer i will upload i just have to make a few changes uh, masters theorem i will send you extra questions just give me some time uh, i was trying uh, i am a little busy uh, nowadays so i'll give you by this week and i'll send you um, uh, i'll send you the assignment also so don't worry assignment as well as notes other than the pdfs okay i have some other notes as well which you can go through okay uh, uh aman just take the attendance if you have not taken yes ma'am uh, uh we'll do this in uh, one more take one more class with this and then we'll start with some other um uh, dynamic programming problem all right uh thank you attendance done so should i end the meeting yes ma'am ma'am done okay all right thank you bye thank you